Welcome to the channel all about economic board games. Today I'm bringing you an overview of Viticulture and this is the essential edition. We've got the design is just below there and it's brought to you by these guys. Now this one plays one to six so there is that solo option. Really varied player count and it plays really nicely with all of them I'd say. And this is the 45 to sort of 90 minutes I'd probably say you're reaching that two hour mark plus with the six players. And in this game, you are running your winery, your winemaking, and you're trying to uh, harvest the vines from your fields. You're trying to turn them into, into grapes when you do so, and then turn them into wine in your cellars, and hopefully fulfill various orders and get residual income and victory points. So this board is... Well, it looks amazing, really. Look at that. And there's a lot going on. It's a typical worker placement game, and it really details each of the seasons really well on the side here, spring through to winter. And you're basically going to be playing out these seasons, uh, and each sort of round is, is one full year. And you play several several years. There's no sort of limit. But once someone reaches this 20 victory point, that sort of triggers the game end. You play out the year, play out those four seasons, and then you see who has the most victory points. Now, to begin with, you'll receive one of these mama and papa cards and they sort of determine what you're going to start with so some workers some money and some varied cards and this papa brings you your, your grande worker which is slightly bigger than the others let's see if i can see them there so you can see this guy which basically i'll explain what that does in a minute and you get a choice of a windmill or some more money once you've kind of took your starting setup you sort of discard those and we've already got our cards out here now in front of you this is your vineyard as such and this is where you're going to be building your infrastructure things like trellises and irrigations to be able to fulfill some of these green cards where you're getting the actual type of wines and uh, all the roots should i say the, the the vines to plant them in your fields you've also got three fields to start off with you can see the values differ and you can see you can fit a maximum vine value of five so for example if i take a couple of these vine cards you can see this is a value of three and two so those would fit in nicely on this one here because it's a max of five if that happened to be a four and a two it'd be a value of six so you'd have to somehow strategically place them in the right fields so let's just say there's those are there and you wanted to somehow sell this in the future you can sell it at the value of six turn it over and it's generated you some extra cash for an unused field and obviously the more of these vines you've got the more you can produce and harvest wine and when you harvest these they turn into these really nice little tokens which represent the grapes so let's just say you did harvest this field you'd get one at a value of three on the, the white grapes and you take one for your red on the value of two and then eventually you're going to be turning these grapes into wine itself using certain spots on the board which i'll go through in a sec now when you do that you take the combined value of whatever you're looking to make you have to make sure you have the seller capacity as well so at the moment we've only got the small seller but when we build the infrastructure for a medium and large you can see the cost there you can get better wines and there's already one on here so you've got your red wine your white wine some sort of rosé and then your sparkling and you're hopefully going to then fulfill orders from merchants so these are the purple cards and you can see this chap here is after a four white wine and a seven sparkling and you're going to get six victory points and then two residual income which is on this track here which is a nice little way to earn money from year to year and this is where you've got your workers to start off with these buildings then they do do a host of things your windmill you can see when you plant a vine so that's one of these you're going to gain a victory point you've got the cottage which lets you draw more cards each fall and they're like visitors that i'll sort of go through in a minute which uh, really give you different options and benefits you can go for your yoke which is like an extra spot to go in either uproot one vine which is take one of these off back into your hand maybe you've got a different configuration or maybe you want to harvest a field again which is vital because there's one of those spots on the board here harvest one field but it can get quite competitive for that uh, depending on how many players you've got so this is an option to do that a tasting room is nice to sort of get a victory point when you go to the vineyard tour that is over here somewhere so you can get money there and if you've got a token of wine in your cellar you get an extra victory point and again the irrigation is mainly used to fulfill these requirements you can see if we wanted to place this one down uh, the little icon there matches that we need that infrastructure to be built and this one needs the trellis so you can only build those if you got those built so how are you actually going to do all that stuff now before you I, I, I explain all the spots you're going to be following this really nice turn order so you've got spring which is where you choose your wake up position so once you've decided the start player as this grape uh, you're going to be picking your order of play so it goes from one to seven 
and let's just say they go number two the yellows decide because uh, they really want one of these these green cards which is going to get them a vine of their choice well not their choice you take the top card and hopefully it gives them something juicy to plant later on uh, the whites are thinking right i really want this extra worker so you've got a choice of first spot which gets you nothing a green card a purple card which is about fulfilling those merchant orders sneaky coin some extra summer or winter visitors a vi victory point or you could even get this extra worker to use for one year and then you put it back so depending on which sort of benefits you want they slightly they get better as you go down but also it determines turn order so yellow is higher up number two they're going to be going first and like any worker placement game you're going to be literally take one of these and you move over to the summer phase which the board's kind of split into two you've got all these yellow spots here and then the blue for winter so we can only place in the summer uh, the yellow phase in the summer and you can see here in a depending on player count number determines which sort of spot so let's just assume we're in a two player game we could only place in this spot here we don't get the advantage of these bonuses in higher player count games so where are we going to go you can go and build one structure so you would literally pay the cost to do so so if you want to build that trellis two bucks and you can see you've got all the different pieces here maybe you want to build that cellar we mentioned or a host of these buildings so that is where you'd go for that uh, if you want to give a tour because you want a bit of money two bucks you go there and if you did have some wine in your cellar and you had this tasting room a nice way to get the victory point as well but you'd, you'd, you'd have had to have built that tasting room we've got a place to go and plant your green cards and also we've got a place to draw them so let's say you you drew one of these cards and it was this one here you're going to keep it in your hand you have a hand limit of seven which you draw down to at the end you're going to need this irrigation unit here before you can actually go to here to plant it and when you plant, once you've planted it, as you say, we've, we've given you an example of those. Now, you can also go here to sell or sell one of your grapes or buy and sell a field. So it might be that you've got some grapes here that have sort of got... Um, more valuable over the rounds over the years and you can see the prices if it's in this one it's one two and three so that at the moment we could sell this for two a nice easy way just to get some money if you've got a lot of grapes on the go and most importantly you can buy or sell one field so as i said you can sell them and get some raise some money from your fields at the top we've got play one of these yellow cards so you can see one randomly a planter you get to plant up to two of those green cards and gain one buck or a brute and discard one to gain two bucks so there's a, a host of cards there and they're all really nice all these cards are great so that's pretty much the summer phase you'd place you might want to place zero workers there and wait for the winter to place your, your workers now there's a, an important thing with the workers you've got the slightly smaller ones and let's just say you went there and this is your grande worker which means you can go to a spot that's already occupied and it might be that your opponents have gone to build a structure and you really wanted to go there you kind of just hover them around and you can then take that action you could also go to a spot that you've been on to to do it again so it's a nice way to to get a one opportunity to do a spot where you might have missed out on so we then go to fall which is where you draw one visitor card now these yellow uh, visitors and the blue visitors these tend to be about the summer because they're in yellow and the blue are about winter so let's just show you one of the blue ones so a taster you get to discard one wine to gain four bucks if it's the most valuable wine in any player's cellar you gain two victory points as well so timing is crucial out of that one so loads of goodness and then you literally go over to the winter phase so if you did have any workers left you can see same applies two player game just that first spot now what have we got here then so if that focuses this is one of the most important spots like any worker placement game you go here to train you pay four bucks and you train one of your dudes so you have got a couple of spare ones so you can see we had three free to begin with including our grande and there's three more on the side so obviously you want to get more workers to give you more opportunities on later rounds you can go let's start up here you can go here to draw one of those purple cards and you can see they give you requirements to try and fulfill get victory points and you get residual income on here which i'll go through in a minute so that's where you go to get those which kind of give you direction as to what you're aiming to achieve what sort of wines and and things you want to develop and then once you complete them you can hopefully go here and fill them and that's where you're going to complete them or sometimes you can go up to the blue one and get a chance to play those blue cards and there's sometimes a lot of those blue cards give the option to fulfill them as well with a sneaky bonus this is where you're going to go to make up to two wine tokens that's where those grapes you've harvested are going to go into your cellars as long as you've got the requirements 
And that is all the spots other than this one here. If you've got nothing else to do, you can just place the work there and gain one buck. Oh, I forgot harvest one field. So that's the same as your yoke on your board. You get a chance to harvest this field. You can only do it once per year. So you take a three and a two in terms of these, which I can't remember if I've already shown you. Uh, yeah, I think I did. And then you put it on the three. If there was already one there, for example, on the three, you just go on the one below it. So in here it would have been the two, and then you've got a one there. So that's how you harvest a field. Now, once you've done that, you go to the year end. So you age the grape and wine tokens, which is a really nice part of the game, I think, because you've worked hard to get these uh, these tokens. And if you've got wine in your cellar, and you basically just up them one, as long as you've got the infrastructure to do so. So they all age, and you never go beyond the nine. You then retrieve all your workers back for next year you collect your residual payments so that's this track here so as you fulfill orders or sometimes the blue card actually i think it's just orders you're going to be going up on here you will then discard down to seven cards if you've got loads of cards and then you rotate the first player counterclockwise and then you literally go back to spring again and you get the benefit of going on one of these and you carry on going through the seasons and year by year until one player gets to 20 points triggers game end play out that year and then see who has the most points which is interesting sometimes because it might be that white triggered it but then yellow was holding on to you know one sort of really big uh, order to fulfill and then skip ahead and take the victory so to kind of summarize quickly again you're trying to get these these sort of um roots what they're called uh, these roots to all these sort of grapes and stuff um, to put in your field you're then trying to harvest them into the grapes in your sort of crush pads you're then trying to get those into your cellar and then you're trying to fulfill orders so there's kind of a layer many layers to the game but there's there's tricksy moments where you realize oh i'll need this trellis to be able to get these into your field i need to acquire money so i'm gonna to have to consider selling a field and there's a lot of sort of uh, sort of take a chance type thing on or potluck as to what cards you get they're all great but some of them really sway your game let's sort of give you a handful here so you've got the un uncertified teachers you can lose a victory point to train one worker <laughs> that's just a must make up to two wine or pay two to train one worker as you can see you know vastly different the bottle and make up to three wines game one for each type of wine you make so they really make or break the game now the solo game works really well as well it's you, they've got this deck here which is kind of gives you a guidance as to what to do so you kind of work your way down you can see the t represents one of the expansions but build one structure and then and you just follow them through but they're really streamlined and, and work well for that mode so yeah overall a really nice game of wine making and developing your your infrastructure to get more money and get your residual income not so much really about the money but during the game it's very thematic in terms of building up your your sort of wine area here your vineyard as such and, and fulfilling those orders so there we are if you're after a playthrough check out the video i'll be bringing you guys next week